Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us. We are broadcasting from the Thomas K. McKeon Center for Creativity, and I'm your host, Corey D. Taylor. My guest today is the Oklahoma Director of Film and Music Office. She is none other than Tay Vosofsky. She's here today to tell us what it would take to make it in the film industry and music scene in Oklahoma. So if you want to see a good show, stay tuned, because this is Oklahoma Up Close. <laughs> Hello and welcome back. And we are here with Oklahoma Film and Music Office Director, Tava Sofsky. How are you today? I'm great this morning. How are you? I'm wonderful. Well, I'm glad that you're here as we were talking before we started the show. It's been a long road of trying to get you here and I understand that you're totally busy. So what are some of the things that you have been up to? Well, just recently, I just uh, returned from Toronto um, in Canada. We went to support Sterling Harjo's film. He wrote and directed the film called Miko, which uh, filmed here in Tulsa, entirely in Tulsa, and utilized our rebate program that the state um, offers and that our office administers. So we went and celebrated Miko. We brought together a lot of industry delegates to meet him and, and the other uh, cast and crew. So that was a huge success. And then also I just came back from Nashville, Tennessee. So we went to uh, our first, other than South by Southwest, we went to our first out of state music conference. So that's interesting because when people typically hear about the Oklahoma um, m um, Film and Music Division, they only look at it as like local, you know, mm -hmm. like statewide. But here it is, you all went all the way to Toronto to celebrate a filmmaker that's from Oklahoma. And I, I believe our audience, our viewers, will want to know because that's real interesting. Mm -hmm. And so when you do that, is that all generated funding for you all to do that through state? How is that funding generated for you all to travel around the country and support people that are from Oklahoma doing those type of things? That's a great question. We have to be very uh, strategic in our spending because we are state funded um, government agency. Uh, so you know where that money comes from. But we, we try to choose wisely. We try to leverage, you know, when a project does choose to film in Oklahoma and use the rebate program, we try to um, just assist them and support them and help promote them in not only just locally, but we have to, I mean, we have to go across the borders, I think, to, to say, look at Oklahoma and showcase Oklahoma and point people back here. It's just gonna keep, you know, um, bringing more people into the state. So we have to, we have to choose wisely. And uh, the question came up the other day, well, what if this film gets into South By? Or are we going and doing the same thing there? And what if this film gets into, cause, because our, our, we're I mean, there are more and more films coming out of Oklahoma. So the answer is we will do all we, what can, we can do within, <laughs> within reason, within budget right. parameters, and we just have to choose wisely. So. And, and going, I want to digress a little bit because you talked about the film rebate. And mm -hmm. I'm, I know that our viewers, because, you know, we, we want to help people to understand all aspects of film, music, business, entrepreneurial stuff. So you're the person I think we're needing to be talking to. So can you explain a little bit about what is that rebate all about for those who want that education that's our viewers? Okay, sure. Um, well, Oklahoma is one of the uh, competitive states for that has the rebate program. Ours is a little unique in that it is a cash rebate. A lot of states around and uh, other countries uh, have rebate programs, but they're more of a tax credit. Um, some some cities or states offer grants. So the state of Oklahoma's is a cash rebate. So ours is um, also a high percentage. We offer, it's a 35, so basically we say, whether you're a local filmmaker, or you're out-of-state filmmaker, or whoever you are, you have a film, you have to meet certain eligibility requirements. Your budget overall needs to meet needs to be fifty thousand dollars, but and then you need a minimum spend in state of twenty five thousand, and then you become eligible to apply. And then um, basically, what happens is we just uh, you know have to see certain proof of funding 
so far out from filming. Um, you have to meet certain benchmark funding benchmarks and insurance requirements and things like that just so that we, you know, because we're using state money um, to make sure that they're doing all that they should be doing. And then they have to show all their Oklahoma expenditures and turn everything in basically at the end. It goes through like a third party review process. And then the state pays out 35 to 37 percent cash back on all their Oklahoma spend. Wow. So it's huge. I mean, it's a huge return and it really impacts smaller films. Um, we have seen a lot of independent films. We obviously we've had August Osage County. They correct. They filmed in Osage Hills and that was one of the larger ones. We have another one that's probably about the same size that's going to be filming in the spring of 2016. And so just larger budget, you know, um, um, so which hopefully means more cast and crew locally would be hired. But uh, so, yeah, so, I mean, it's it's a very competitive. The one thing that Oklahoma still has room to grow in is our cap. So we have we can only spend or pay out five million per fiscal year. So a lot of other states. They don't, they just say, come on everybody. And they right. just, they, there's no limit. But if you read the trades and if you read what's going on in the industry, there's a lot of people that are, that are um, legislators that are looking at that and, you know, asking is that, do we need to just open it all up? So, so we're, I think we're being smart and strategic to grow kind of slowly. Um, we're a little over two crews deep Meaning, like right now, we've got two films in production, mm -hmm. and everybody seems happy. <laughs> right, right. And a lot of people are working. Yes. And so um, we're just continuing to grow our database of crew, and so that we can accommodate more and more productions. Now, that's interesting because I was at a film um, workshop, and I had the opportunity to hear Sterling talk, and he has a vision. I know, along with a lot of other filmmakers, to like less woo people from these other film markets and grow Oklahoma as a huge film market for people to come. Similar to what they're doing in Georgia right now, mm -hmm. you know, studios are being built there, films are being shot there, and the mm -hmm. thing that's awesome about you being here is that I have a passion for filmmaking. I make documentaries and things of that nature. So to hear you say these things is very mm -hmm. exciting because a lot of times when people think about film, the only thing they think about are actors, the directors, mm -hmm. sometimes the producers, but they don't think about all of the science and the logistics right. that go on behind the scenes. And I'm so glad you're here mm -hmm. to share. So with that being said, you have a history in film. Mm -hmm. And so I want you to share a little bit about that because I know you were um, production manager in Mexico for Fast and Furious. Mm -hmm. So talk to us a little bit about your experience. With that particular with, film? With anything. With all of it? Yeah. Well, I have to I have to rewind a little bit just to say that, you know, I'm born and raised here, love mm -hmm. from Ada, Oklahoma, and uh, graduated from OU and just went to LA, didn't know a soul. And the thing that I love uh, about the film industry, I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I started as a PA, and that's what I would tell anybody, you know, you don't know what you want to do, but you think you want to get in the film industry. Mm -hmm. Just start as a PA, just get on a production. Uh, work for free if you have to. Just get on a set and see, as a PA, you just get to see everything. Exactly. And then you can sort of migrate to what, you know, camera, or maybe it's my husband uh, started, he started as an actor, and then, or an extra, sorry, an extra, and then kind of had a few speaking lines. And he loved the behind the scenes so much. Like they had a huge scene on a film called Rosewood in Florida where they had thousands of extras and they like pulled him just to help wrangle extras. And that was when he shifted to behind the scenes. It was like, I love all this behind the scenes, forget being on camera. Mm -hmm. And so he became a second AD in the industry just by, just by, trying something new so for me I started as a PA and I loved a little I loved all of it mm -hmm. so that's why I continue that's why I started working as a producer's assistant and then you really get to see the whole the whole big picture of the film um, you get to hear and see the communication between the actors the studio the directors the writers all your key department heads and so I loved all of it so as a production supervisor associate producer and kind of that path that I took um, you are that go-between, you're overseeing kind of all the department heads. And so um, just many years of that led to uh, 
well, you brought up Fast and Furious. I mean, that was that was uh, us taking a a small unit to Mexico, which a lot of people probably don't even realize <laughs> that we went to Mexico. But right. I mean, for for that. But it was. Uh, I mean, it was crazy. It was fun. It was. But when you say a small unit, what is a small unit, though, really? Well, there's always a main unit, and then there's like a second unit. Yes. And so it was a more of a smaller second unit because it's, it's just expensive to travel crew. And so, oh, gosh, I mean, we pr probably had 30 and the re That's my point. People. That's my I point. I mean, you still have to have <laughs> the hair, the makeup that you... Yeah. Right. And that's my point, because when you say small unit, I'm thinking people are going to be like, um, especially some local filmmakers who haven't had that broad experience. Mm -hmm. They're going to think, oh, that's like five people. Mm -hmm. No, that's 30 people. That's like a full staff because mm -hmm. you have to replicate what you're doing on the main crew, mm -hmm. but in a condensed version on location somewhere. And that's right. so awesome. So when you got that, did you get that through, like, you just resume building, connections? How did you get into the Fast and Furious type situation? Um, well, how I got just working on on larger films was, I, I mean, it started just sending resumes. Honestly, I sent, when I was a senior in high school, I mean, sorry, college, when I was a senior in college, I mean, I sent hundreds of resumes, and at the time, I was sending, I think, like three quarter inch tapes, you know, of like a little, a little uh, digital resume, if you will, um, because I had done some internships and I had some just video production, editing experience, and little this, little that, and so I just follow. I just, my spring break in my senior year in college, I just followed up with all those people. But one thing led to another, and I met a producer who actually is from Tulsa. Mm -hmm and Doug Claiborne, and he took a chance on me. I was working on commercials. He hired me on Drop Zone, um, a film that we did in Florida. And then from there, it just you just go from, once you can get your foot in the door, you it just snowballs. I mean, it's just, it's all networking. And so that is one thing that our office is is uh, working hard to, to start some new networking events. Tulsa just did it, which is fabulous. And uh, I mean, that's what, that's where things seed, like, yes, you know, things exactly. seed at those kinds of networking events. And it's just, you know, someone and they know somebody that you need to know. And that's just how it worked. I mean, that's how it worked for me. And that's important because a lot of times when people, again, when they see the film, after they see the finished product, they don't understand even not just the logistics, but they don't understand the networking that went on behind the scenes. And, and mm -hmm. so many people don't know that. They, they think that I'm going to go to film school and that's it. That's the end all be all. And then mm -hmm. I'm just going to jump out there and get it done. And we've had many producers, directors, Sit right mm -hmm. where you're sitting and I love it when they come on and say listen you see the finished product that's exciting but if right. you can be behind the scenes and you can find out where you fit that's even more exciting for a lot of people mm -hmm. like for me ex for an example um, I started off as an actor mm -hmm. and then I, I wasn't a great actor anyway but <laughs> I started mm -hmm. out as, as an actor and then as I was forced to do my own thing, I started having a love for producing. And then that's when I went into being a producer and things of that nature. And it was through networking. Um the Wayman Tisdale story, oh, a documentary. Okay. I was a producer on that, but awesome. let me tell you how that happened. We were in Coffeeville, Kansas, where I lived at the time, and then my wife was working at a, a school, and she and her this lady she knew that was a teacher said, oh, you need to meet my brother. My brother is a producer out of Chicago, and then we sat down and had mm -hmm. lunch. Four months later, I get a call. I want to do this documentary. Can you help me connect me with the mm -hmm. people in Tulsa, mm -hmm. Oklahoma, which is Wayman Perfect. and his family, and then that it was like a three-year process, but then it happened. So the networking aspect is so important. So you left, you've gone for some time. Some time. Yeah, we I'm not going to go into it, <laughs> even though it's out there on the website, but <laughs> you've been gone for some time. And then what made you come back? We have a family. My husband and I, have got, we have three children. And just wanting um, just, a, just a normal, I wouldn't say slow, because I don't think Oklahoma is a slow pace, but... Just a just a, a a nice balanced you know pace of life and being closer to family here, and I will be honest and say you know after ten years of being out in LA, I mean, 
and I wasn't even in LA. I was traveling all over the world, you know, so it's ti it's tiring. <laughs> I mean, it's it was great and I loved the the career path that I took. But after 10 years, it was like, I wonder if anything's going on in Oklahoma. And at the time, you know, um, now I'm starting to date myself, but you know, during that time, I mean, there were, we had a small rebate program. There were, you know, more and more films starting to, to happen here. But we actually moved back, uh, not for me to get back into film. Brian was still working in film and traveling um, freelance, but um, just, to, just to choose a good central, centrally located place to, to raise our family. And, and then this job came up and it was just a blessing, you know, cause it just was kind of like I came full circle, but so just being proud to be back home. And I see Oklahoma in like a totally different light now, you, you know, know, having been away and traveled and worked and seen so many places. And mm -hmm. so, uh, it's, it's hard when young filmmakers, I mean, or musicians for that matter, because there's a lot that, as you know, they, even musicians, they kind of make it big and then they leave Oklahoma. And I think everybody's got to do what they, what they need to do, what's right for them or their family. Um, because I don't think I would be where I am if I didn't have that experience away. Correct. But there are people that need to stay in Oklahoma. We want people to, to stay and help us, help us grow this. I mean, it's like just brick by brick and we need as many people that believe, you know, believe in Oklahoma and, um, the industries here to to keep building it. Do you do any film stuff outside of um, what you're doing currently with the um, film office and music? Do well, you get to do projects still? Um, or this keeps you pretty busy? Well, with my kids, um, <laughs> my husband does, so I get to keep a foot in, but um, personally, I did turn my hat around and just became a, a, a crew member on a film that uh, a few people from our office and then just some other crew and you know local crew in Oklahoma we did the 48 hour film race so I don't know if you're familiar with yes, that I am. but that was a lot of fun and it brought back a lot of memories and <laughs> and uh, it was intense because it was had to be done in 48 hours but so that was that was fun yeah yeah so in terms of going to school and you know you went to OU mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, how was the education process for you was it filmmaking that you were doing then or what was your major that you went into it was radio TV film production is what it was called I mean the the programs there are a little different you know there's the film and media studies and then there's the communications which is a little more broadcast journalism um, and then I had a couple internships working you know, out in the field working on productions uh, during college. But really, I mean, now with OCCC here and, uh, you know, just there are more and more opportunities here. There's a lot of tech schools for the younger kids to, to bridge that gap. I mean, a lot of those students of, at those schools I just named, they're getting a, a intense, brief education and then they're jumping right on films and they're working. So it's, I think it's proven that you can stay and, and work. You don't have to go to LA. When you go to LA or Nashville, if you're a musician, I mean, you know, you're one of a million. And here, what we're seeing and what's kind of cool is that our crew, they might start as a production assistant or pro and then move to production coordinator rather quickly and then move on up. I mean, we've j I've just literally witnessed in the past six months lo two location managers moving up, one moving wow. into a pr production manager producing role uh, from one film to the next over just, you know, I think that says a lot for Oklahoma. You, you just, I mean, and just with our work ethic, with the people that come out of Oklahoma, they, they've got what it takes to to climb the ladder and I think it would take a lot longer in LA for some to do that. So, um, yeah. And so I'm hearing you express mm -hmm. those same sentiments and I believe that's the thing because when people meet me, when I travel around the country, they were like, hey, if you made it there, you can go anywhere because yeah. you do learn how to be um, the school of hard knocks, you know, we don't have all of the stuff that's read, um, available to us to one if we're trying to be creative. So we have mm -hmm. to create things, right. but in turn we network mm -hmm. and then we grow and things of that nature. So what is your vision now since you've taken over the, this office of film and music, what is your vision? Well, 
I think to continue growing the industries, and then I had to ask myself, I mean, growing the industries and promoting and supporting the industries, I had to ask myself, you know, that's our mission statement. <laughs> what does that mean, really? Correct. And so, so I think we've really been, um, just really been talking to a lot of, um, of our crew, of uh, talking to musicians and asking them, you know, what are some areas that they see that need to be strengthened? They're the ones we're trying to help. So trying to hear people out, and one of those is more networking opportunities um, and just in promoting musicians. I mean, they, they need, connectivity is really one of the huge things that our office does, is just connecting the right people. Like, I can't personally recommend somebody for a film, but I can connect them with our production guide or our music guide or our locations guide, and they can find the right location for their film. They can find the right music composer. I just had a conversation yesterday with a, uh, a producer and director that just filmed here last fall. We connected him with an Oklahoma music composer who works in LA and here. He's a dual resident, and he scored their film, and he is He's like singing this guy's praises. Um, and he's just a guy, I mean, he's a guy from Oklahoma City that moved to LA and he's working and he evidently scored this film. I haven't heard it yet, but um, you know, it's just connecting people and, and providing those opportunities for the crew. And um, also I think connecting with like the schools too. And I think that's really important to start them you know, to connect with them young when they're younger so that they kind of know what to look forward to. They can, you know, they can see what's going on ahead of them and like kind of have set goals to be a part of that one day. And that's interesting that you said that about here is this composer that's, you know, two residents. What, what I find interesting and what's awesome about this show, and this is why the show was created, because there are so many people, you know, you know about the Miranda Lambers, the Blake mm -hmm. Shelton's, the Carrie Underwood's, you know, and you know about the, um, the Thomas Blake Nelson's, you know all about these people, mm -hmm. but there are so many people that are behind the scenes that are doing stuff on national and international right. levels that are from Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. I was on the shoot of a commercial and I was telling people about this show and then they was like, well, Oklahoma, like, if, if why did somebody bring us in to come shoot this commercial? And I was like, look, do me a favor. Mm -hmm. Go to Oklahoma, famous people from Oklahoma, and go to the Wikipedia page. I say, and then they, they got up the next morning, and they was like, oh, my God. I didn't know this person. I was like, right. I already know. Mm -hmm. This person, this person, this person. I said, but that's a list of the ones who have made it to, like, celebrity type. Right. I said, there's a ton of other people, mm -hmm. such as yourself, that people that mm -hmm. are not there in the limelight, but they are out there doing big things for film, television, business, and most people don't know that they had their little humble beginnings mm -hmm. in this little bitty state of Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. Because when they think of Oklahoma, they think about Native Americans, they think about cowboys, but they don't know right. that's some serious things that are going on. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad you came back. I'm glad you have this vision for the um, film and the music office. So what is next? on the agenda besides, you mentioned some things, but what is what is the vision for the next maybe five years, if you can tell me that, really in a nutshell, like what do you see the biggest thing that's coming next for you all? Sure, sure. Um, well, I'm gonna talk about a couple of things that we're currently kind of working mm -hmm. on, because those are gonna, I think, evolve and grow into, you know, accomplishing those longer term goals. Um, but we, one, I'm going to talk about film and TV and then music, but film and television, we are in the process of recruiting, really working hard to recruit a television series to the state of Oklahoma. Pick wherever you want to set up shop, you know, and we'll, we'll support you. Um, we are uh, in pretty serious talks about a, someone in uh, Oklahoma City that wants to build a large soundstage which can accommodate larger productions and TV series. They need, they need two big stages, a, a television series, to build a set, have a swing set go back and forth, you know, while they're on 
practice shooting practical locations. They need they need a large stage, and we've got stages. And we don't want to take business away from the smaller stages because those are already you know being utilized. But we keep hearing that request, so we'd love to have a large sound stage. We're working on that a, a series, Can, whether it be locally grown or it comes from you know outside of the state. Um, and same with films, it doesn't matter really if it's a small indie film, if it's a large studio film, we don't care. Right. Um, just film here, appreciate Oklahoma, show off Oklahoma locations, hire a cruise, you know, all the and musicians and film composers, all those things. Um, and then, what, and one thing that we can do to support that in addition to the rebate program and the connect, the connections that I was telling you about is off, also offering mentor um, opportunities, so I didn't really talk about that before, but that's a, a, a long, a kind of short to longer term goal is offering mentor uh, type opportunities for people. So that like you're, you're talking about some of these behind the scenes people that nobody knows about, giving them a voice to talk to our younger generations. Um, you know, maybe, you know, maybe bringing in a big name to also work, you know, to talk to those people. We're actually, um, we are actually starting that process next year. There's a songwriting festival, so now I'll jump to music. It's um, all good. But yeah, uh, there's gonna be a songwriting uh, s conference festival that's gonna be bringing in some big players, some songwriters and um, label representatives from LA and Nashville. And you know, coupling those people with some of the local strong musicians that we've got, the Hansons here in Tulsa, mm -hmm. the Graham Coltons in Oklahoma, you know, in Oklahoma City, and just some other great um, song singer songwriters, um, with some younger aspiring artists, and having those opportunities to teach them and to educate them and, and inspire them to go, you know, to go on and fulfill their dreams. So just creating those opportunities. And I mean, ultimately, whoever's listening, it would be great to have a little bit higher cap on our rebate program. But again, you know, Plug I it. think we've got to grow <laughs> right. at the right pace and uh, and just continue to show that we're using the program wisely and it's working, you know. I think we've got, there's a lot of statistics and data that show the economic um, impact here wow. in Oklahoma. So. Yeah, so hopefully I didn't leave anything out. No, no, you covered everything. Well, thank, I want to just, first of all, thank you because you've given out a wealth of information for our viewers, and I know you're probably going to get calls now. People are going to like, <laughs> we didn't know this, so this, and that's what this show is all about. So mm -hmm. I would like to thank you so much for coming, and, you sure. know, hopefully you, when more things happen, you could come back and join us again. Absolutely. We'd all right. love to come. Well, Thanks thank for you having so much. me. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed our show today. I would like to thank our guest, Tava Sofsky, for joining us. Think about this. Change is inevitable, but your attitude towards that change, it is always optional. Until next time, keep looking forward.